I'm Pastudek Roland, and um, I am the Development Communications Officer for Trinity College. And I'm here today with Sarah Cody, who is a reporter at WTNH. Um, and she's agreed to join us for a video Bantam check in. So, Sarah, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Tess. Thanks so much for uh, asking me to do this. I loved my time at Trinity. And since I work here in Connecticut, it's great to go back for events and connect with people. So, this is a pleasure. Thank you. We're so pleased to have you. And one of the things that I think is uh, so cool is that um, we get to be kind of on the opposite end of what you're usually doing and interview you. <laughs> you and I were just joking about that. I don't love being on the other side. So it's good for me. You're testing my abilities. I'm used yes, to being well, with Thank you for humoring us. <laughs> Um, so why don't we just start with, why don't you tell us a little bit about what your experience has been like in the last few months and working from home and, and kind of facing all the challenges so many of us have uh, experienced in our own lives? Um, well, I just, like everybody else, remember that week in March when everything changed. Um, at the station, we were preparing for the New Haven St. Patrick's Day Parade, which is a big production that we do. And all of a sudden that got postponed or you know canceled slash postponed and we were like oh what's going on here and after that that week like everyone else remembers it just was like the domino effect of everything changed kids are out of school the events are canceled what are we doing at work um so right around that time i started anchoring a weekend show and i have to say the station has been great about making everyone feel good and safe while we're there um, you know, instituting desks being apart, people on different floors. We have a cleaning staff that's there all the time now and that kind of thing. So um, I was going into the studio Saturdays and Sundays to anchor my shows and working from home during the week to do my stories um, and just adapted like everybody else. It, uh, you know, with the kids home, we had a couple of funny incidents when I started doing all my stories during the week over Zoom. Um, and one time I'm in the middle of a Zoom like this interview that we're rolling on for the news. And my son starts playing basketball right above my head. And it was like, dribble, dribble, dribble. And I was like, no. So I had all the, you know, kids at home, work from home issues that everyone else has had. It's, it's been wild. But at least we've been um, healthy and safe. And we made masks as a family. That was a great project. So we, we've tried to stay productive. But what an unprecedented time. It really is. And I know that one of the segments you do is Connecticut families. Um, and obviously you are a Connecticut, part of a Connecticut family. Um, so how is your work and covering the experiences of families across the state kind of given you a wider perspective about the pandemic and this moment kind of we're all sharing right now? Um, I used to produce those stories ahead of time because they're a little bit longer and, and more highly produced. And once the pandemic hit, my bosses said, we need you to just do the stories day of and tap into whatever families are dealing with that day. Wow. Um, I've done everything from, um, you know, all kinds of distance learning uh, stories, how to make schedules, the challenges parents are facing, sleep issues in kids, teen angst, because teen angst in this is, you know, people might roll their eyes or whatever, but it's been very real. Teens are wired to be social and being home all the time and not with their friends is going to cause stress at home and within them. Um, we've done, should kids be wearing masks? So really it was just sort of um, stretching uh, my, my story idea ability each one of these days to try to tap into what's going to help a family here at this time. Um, so it's been rewarding to do that. And uh, I feel, you know, I started anchoring right, coincidentally, right when this started too. And I have felt a great responsibility to be there and bring folks the information that they need. Um, you know, so it's, it has been challenging but rewarding at the same time. I mean, your work is so critical right now and it uh, must be very enriching to know that you're part of delivering reliable information to, to families and, and people who need it uh, in the state. So you have a lot of experience reporting. I know you were a reporter when 9-11 happened, um, and I know that's a totally different kind of experience, but we're all kind of going through feelings of shared loss right now. 
And I'm wondering what, um, as both witness and reporter to all of this, what's been motivating you and keeping you hopeful during this time? Well, I've been in the business for 25 years now, and I have to say, you know, you say it's different, but there have been pivotal moments in my career. 9-11 was one of them. Sandy Hook was one of them. This was one of them. I mean, that, that's what sticks out to me. Um, and in terms of 9-11, I was talking with a friend of mine who, was, who I've known for years. We worked together for years. And he and I agreed that while the events are so different, it was the same kind of feeling of everything's, everything's changed. Where is our life right now? Um, we are not going forward in the same way. And, and going out in the world and feeling that way when you look at people and connect with people, it's, it's different. Um, and we kind of don't, it was the same kind of thing where we didn't know what was going on for the next few weeks and months. Everyone was scared and there was security. This, was, this is different, but it's the same kind of feeling. Um, so when I reflect on 9-11, what I think I came away, I was young, very young in my career then. I was in my late 20s and I had not been at the station for too, too long. Um, and I learned, I think I gained, I, for a year after 9-11, I covered 9-11 and then for a year afterwards, every day covered a 9-11 story, many of them talking to families that lost loved ones. And it was just a time that, I think changed the way I interview people, changed the way I connect with people in their homes who are sharing their stories with me. Um, and I, I deal with that now every day with Connecticut families, families sharing their most intimate stories about their children with disabilities and the different challenges that they face. So for me, it was just a pivotal moment to bring empathy and humanity into my reporting and to connect with people. And I, I think it's something that you know, it has been a has been a a positive outcome of a terrible situation in terms of the way I relate to people. Um, so, and I I feel the same way with this situation now. Absolutely, and I know you've also done some work with a podcast, Parenting Beyond the Headlines, um, and people are having a lot of difficult conversations that require empathy and sensitivity within their own families. Um, how do you tackle these big topics when you're not um, on the news or, or when you're in more intimate family situations in your own life? Like anybody else, you know, and I, when I started the family reporting, I started that um, really with a column in the current that was called the Hartford Current called uh, Mommy Minute, which I started now. I don't know. Uh, I took it over maybe 10 years ago, and I was very clear with them, my bosses from the get-go, that I didn't want to be giving people advice in this mommy family reporting realm because I have all the questions that everybody else <laughs> has too. You know, I don't have anything solved. But we all just keep trying and giving each other support is what I wanted to do. Um, so I struggle here at home to figure out all those issues too, and I do you know, I, I interview all these people, I interview all these experts, so I get all this advice, and I think I drive my family crazy when I'm like, I'm covering the story, and I heard blah, blah, blah. They're like, oh, God, here we go again. <laughs> Absolutely. Just, and in terms of, um, I, you know, I think you were, with the podcast, say, um, we jumped right in during that week, like I said, in March, where everything changed, and did a coronavirus um, podcast, that was so early on though, that things changed. I mean, this was, this was like an ever-changing landscape those first few weeks. Um, so since then we've done more and we've done uh, how parents of special needs students are dealing with distance learning. Um, we've done all kinds of things. So we hope the podcast, you know, on the news, I have to keep my segments to two minutes and I'm good at that. You know, I've done it for a long time and I can condense. But with the podcast, we have a half hour or so to really dive into the issues. Um, and I host that with an educator and author, Amy Alomar, and she's on the West Coast. She's in California, and we do it all over Zoom. So we bring two different perspectives, and I, it's, it's a great project. You can find it on Spreaker, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, you know, mostly wherever you find podcasts, and it's, it's been fun. That's wonderful. What really strikes me about everything you're doing, from some writing to uh, 
podcast to being on TV is the incredible versatility you show in your work. And I wonder, um, you know, you're a graduate of Trinity College, a liberal arts college. How has your liberal, liberal arts education allowed you to kind of pivot and adapt? Um, certainly in times like these, when we all have to be a little bit flexible and try new things and, and different things. So would you mind talking a little bit about that? No, that's great. I mean, I do, I do think the liberal arts education teaches you to pivot and adapt. Um, one of the best, two of the best things I did at Trinity um, were uh, internships. I did internships. I knew then that I was interested in TV news. Um, so I walked down to CPTV, um, which I don't know, is it's not close to the station anymore, is it? But it was then. Um, I did internships there and I did internships at Channel 3. WFSB. Um, so having that ability to do those internships and begin to hone in on what I really wanted to do while I was at Trinity was so um, important. And I think being in a city atmosphere, I say to a lot of people, for me that really worked because I need, I wanted those internships, I needed those internships and they were so valuable. Um, and then I, I took a semester abroad in Florence and um, I was not well traveled at that time. And boy, that teaches you to think on your feet and pivot all the time and figure out language issues and all of that at, you know, at a snap. And um, I think about it every day. It was one of the greatest things that, um, that I did. And Trinity, you know, I met my husband there. I met um, a group of friends that is still so important to me and a lot of people that motivated me to pursue my my dreams and my career and you know had similar goals uh it was a great time for me it was a time of great growth for me you know working at trinity and certainly for our students they have a wonderful opportunity to learn from fantastic mentors and professors on campus and um i'm wondering if you have any professors that were meaningful to you to help you kind of um build your consciousness and and really jump off into the world with, with that uh, mentorship experience. I do. Sheila Fisher, who I keep uh, in touch with on Facebook, um, was my advisor senior year. And also uh, I took her Chaucer class too early. I think I was a sophomore when I took it and mostly upperclassmen take it. And oh my gosh, I struggled and I didn't do very well. <laughs> But it's the class I remember, and it's Sheila that I remember, and it's, you know, Sheila that I've kept in touch with. Those people that challenge you, you know, even if it's not a perfect outcome, um, are the ones that I remember. Ron Thomas was one of my, uh, I, I majored in English literature, and he taught a Jane Austen class that I loved. Um, gosh, Arthur Feinsod and Josh in uh, acting, my, my minor was performance art. Um, I had a lot of great teachers that, that really stick out and, and made a big difference. You know, we've covered a lot. <laughs> and I just wonder if you have any other thoughts. We've, we've kind of come a long way since February when, when this pandemic really hit. Um, and I, I wonder if you have any thoughts about um, uh, kind of journalism in this moment, um, particularly as we move from um, talking about the pandemic to, to other issues like civil rights and social justice that we're all kind of observing through the news that we read and watch. It has been um, an incredibly important time, a time that we hope uh, shifts the, the, the direction of this country. Um, and in my reporting in terms of the George Floyd killing, um, with Connecticut families, just like with the pandemic, we just pivoted there and said, we have to give families some resources about how to talk to this. And right off, we did a piece with um, Congresswoman Johanna Hayes and a uh, local blogger who I knew, Carmen Beal, really talking about um, how to talk to kids about what's going on today. And the takeaways I got from that were, um, everyone, they're uncomfortable conversations, they're hard conversations, that's okay. And just dive in and try. And um, silence is the worst uh, mode that you can take, you know, talking about it is what you have to do early, early when they're young and often. 
and to um, kind of engage the kids with open-ended questions in the beginning. You know, what do you see at school? What, what have you seen um, as we've gone to these different places? Do you know what racism is? So uh, we also did a great piece on Connecticut families about teens, teen pro teens going to the protests um, and how their voice at this time is going to be very important and shape the way we go forward. Um, so again, similar to the parenting issues, you know, certainly we don't have all the answers, but trying to talk about it and open the dialogue and learn, we all need to learn in this is, uh, is, is what, what we're trying to do. Anything else you'd like to share with your friends in the Trinity community? Well, I, I'm sure Trinity is facing a lot of challenges as to how to um, welcome students back in the fall safely, and I'm continuing to watch that. And um, also, you know, in a unique position in the city and, and really being on the forefront of the talks of, of race relations and, you know, not being an enclave of academia, but being enmeshed in, in Hartford as well. Um, so I'm here to join in the talks if anyone wants, and I will be watching and, uh, you know, hoping for the best for the school. It's a place that, as I said, holds a lot of fond memories for me. Thank you so much, Sarah. We really, really appreciate having you. Thank you, Tess. Take care. You too.